I'm gonna give this video the most clickbaity title that I've ever given for a YouTube tutorial, but I'm not gonna apologize for it. This is a setting that I use in every one of my scenes and have done for the past few years. If you're new to Keyshot and still learn the ropes, then enabling this setting and using the method that I'm gonna lay out in this tutorial should help you take your renders up a notch with literally just one click. But before we get to it, a quick message from Salesman Liam. For the past year, my team and I at Moment have been hard at work building out our library of ready to render Keyshot assets to help you visualize your products. We've got high quality interiors, studio scenes, and products available on our online store, currently all compatible with Keyshot version 10 and up. Maybe you're looking for a complete scene to drop your product into. Perhaps you're looking for some props to give your products context, or maybe you're just looking to dissect one of our scenes to see how we set things up professionally. They're all there to help. New customers can get 20% off the first purchase when they sign up to our mailing list. So if you're interested, I'll leave the link to moment.co.uk in the description below. Let's get back to the video. To demonstrate the workflow I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be using this scene, uh, which features one of our assets, the beautiful Kef LS50 Meta. Now, this scene is lit with HDRI lighting only. There's no area lights or spotlights in here. In fact, if you look over here in the environment tab, this is what's light in this up. So you've got your backdrop and then two pins. I'm gonna show you this method in other scenes anyway, um, but I thought product is probably gonna be the best place to start. One thing to note before we actually look at it is the background of this is a solid color. So I'm not looking at the lighting environment. I'm just looking at a solid color. And that's because that untethers the background behind my product and what's happening here. We're gonna have them both change independently, uh, which I find really helpful. I'll explain why. So the method in question, what one button am I gonna press in Keyshot to improve? Well, it's over in the image tab and it's putting Keyshot out of basic mode and into photographic. Now, some of you at that point might have just done a big sigh and left the video and that's fine if you've used this before, but I'm aware a lot of people haven't and like I said, this is something that I use in every one of my scenes. It's incredibly powerful. So when you change it over to photographic mode, Keyshot will automatically put it into low contrast. There is also linear and high contrast either side of it. Now, linear is basically where you start off on default. Okay, so this is where we just were. We were just in linear mode. Now, low contrast, if you look at the description, if you hover over it, it actually says that it's built for scenes with high contrast in shadows. Uh, for example, when the sun is coming through a window in an interior, bright sun. But really what I would say it do, does is almost lower the dynamic range. It brings the shadows up, it brings the highlights down. And the way I equate that to is giving me more headroom to edit this in Keyshot. Okay, so it's uh, giving us more space to increase our exposure, increase our at contrast, um, all in this in this panel and very, very quickly. You can go up to high contrast mode as well, although in most cases, I tend to leave it in low contrast and then just figure out the settings from there. So once you've gone into low contrast mode, two sliders you need, exposure and contrast. Okay, so bringing up the exposure will obviously make the whole image brighter, but I would say the first one you wanna come to is contrast. Okay, so you're gonna increase the contrast just to where the level you want, and then you will adjust the exposure uh, to bring it down. So I normally find that I drop the exposure. Okay, in fact, my exposure can stay almost at zero. Just by increasing that contrast, um, I've got the look I want, okay? Now, just to AB this, just to show you what it was like before and after, I'm gonna make a new image style. You, of course, don't have to do this, and I'm gonna just turn denoise on. So this is where we just started, and this is where we are now. I think objectively we can all agree that this is a better looking image. It's better balanced, the tones are better, and it's we've got a lot more control over it. Now, I wanted to move on to show you what to do with a backdrop because this will be changing the color of your backdrop regardless. It affects the whole image, the image style does, including when you've got a color, solid color background. So let's say you want a white background, for example. I would say you've got two solid options. The first option would be to not have any geometry in the background. So this is all just no geometry and render the image transparent. So in the render settings, if you go with anything other than JPEG, you should be able to include alpha transparency and that will render the image out with a transparent background, which you can then put a layer, a white layer underneath it 
and then you've got your white background in Photoshop or whatever gray you want on your website, for example. The other option you've got is to actually increase the exposure much further. So you know this background, which is actually white, but remember the low contrast will have brought that white down. So to increase the exposure really far, like three or something like that in my case, horribly overexposed. But then what I can do, because remember, the lighting on the product in my case in the background, they're untethered, they're not linked. So I can actually start to bring down my overall lighting, my environment lighting, that is lighting up my products. I can keep bringing that down and down and down and down until my product is in the exposure that I want. Now remember, it's still on a white background because this bringing this down doesn't impact my background at all. They're untethered. So you've got two methods for doing that there. So that's it in product, okay? That's a standard product scene. I think we can see very, very quickly you can get a better render. Now let's have a look at another scene. All right, so I've got an interior file up now. It's a beautiful file. It's actually using one of our uh, moment assets, the fireplace diorama, which I really like to render with. And I'm gonna show you in this case how we can also use photographic mode in low contrast or high contrast to improve this render. Now, off the bat, this is again only lit by HDRI lighting. In this case though, it is kind of underexposed. This is a little bit flat and a little bit dark. So we're gonna make improvements there anyway, but still having it in photographic mode is gonna enable us to make those adjustments a little bit more easily. So again, over to the image tab, out of basic, straight into photographic. The change here is a lot less noticeable. The scene wasn't particularly high contrast anyway. So in this case, we could actually see what high contrast does. So it does increase the contrasting. Overall, it kind of darkens the image, um, but either or you can use the base and play with it. So I've already said, uh, in this case, we really do need to bring up the exposure. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up the exposure of this image and then balance it out with contrast. I don't think we need that much more contrast. We're about there-ish for me. So I know the exposure is corrected. I get that it's gonna be brighter and that's gonna look better than the original image. But if we do, again, an AB comparison, this is where we were at before. Again, just with denoise on, here's where we are after. Okay, before, even before with a brightness and gamma correction, we are still better, much better off in our low contrast mode. It just controls the highlights a lot better and gives us more headroom. Now you can always take this into, and we always do, an application like Lightroom or Photoshop after and make those tweaks, but this is gonna give you better renders straight out of Keyshot uh, and hopefully give you a really quick improvement. So I'm gonna leave it there. Fingers crossed this video was helpful. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and a comment down below and look forward to welcoming you back to another video, hopefully in the short future. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.